Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. I am Aaron. Um, don't know if we'll get to any actual programming today. Um, I want to get started on the farm game, um, but there's a lot of kind of design decisions to make, um, things like that. I haven't got, it's probably been two weeks since I did the first little intro on this and I hadn't got back to it yet because basically I was sort of mentally stuck on how I wanted to go about some things. And so, I th you know, even though the idea here is that you get to follow along as I work these things out, I don't think anybody wanted to actually watch me just sit and think for an hour. So I wanted to get at least some ideas in my head first and then go through kind of how I came to them and things like that. So I had pretty much talked myself out of using the 80-column screen. That, that, that originally was what I wanted to do, and then after I thought about it, and we did the 80 column routines and I realized okay we can't use the 80 column screen in, we, can, we can't use the bitmap mode in the 80 column without either giving up color or requiring that people have the 64k extension and so at that point I said okay maybe that's just not an option maybe we'll just stick with the 40 column screen for the sake of color you know, for the sake of having more colors so I pretty much decided that and then I said, okay, we've got a few modes to choose from, so let's look at them and figure out you know, what one to use. Um, as far as the text modes go, now there's also the bitmap mode, which is a little different, but I assumed I would be using text mode because I think for this kind of a game it's just going to make sense. Everything that's going to be on the screen can be a, a, a character, and because you can program your own characters and then you know, grass, you know, grass can be one character, dirt can be a character, your little guy that walks around can be maybe two by two characters or three by three or something like that. And so everything can be character graphics and that should be a lot faster than drawing bitmap graphics. And that was my assumption anyway. So looking at the different modes, you have your standard text mode, which is just, you know, the one it's in when you turn a computer on. And that gives you two possible colors for each character. Each each character is an 8 by 8 cell and you can have two colors in that cell. Now one of those colors is just the background color which is the same across the whole screen. The other one is you know can be set per cell and so you can have different characters for each cell across the you know across the screen. But you're limited you're limited then to two colors in each 8 by 8 cell and one of those has to be consistent all the way across and that gives you then you can have the, the maximum resolution for the 40 column screen which is 320 by 200 and you can use all 256 characters so that was one option now you can also go multicolor text mode which gives you four possible colors in each 8 by it cell now only one of them can be unique to each cell the other three all come from let's see yeah, the other three all come from particular registers, and so there's going to be three colors that have to be the same, you know, throughout the throughout the screen. But then there's one color. One of the four colors can change from cell to cell. So in the very first cell, you could have like white, black, and red, and blue, and in the next cell, you could have white, black, red, and yellow. So everything, you know, everything breaks down by cell. Now going multicolor means you lose resolution. You have to use two pixels to represent each bit on the screen. Each, each, or, sorry, I got that backwards. You have to use two bits to represent each pixel on the screen because two bits allows you to say 0, 1, 2, or 3 so that you have four different possible colors. So you lose, you lose half of your resolution then. You have only 160 by 200. Now that's the, that's the, the mode that most Commodore 64 games are in, I would say. Um, most of the colorful ones anyway. You still have 256 possible characters, it's just that your characters then are really 4 by 8. They're really only 4 dots wide and the dots are, are wider. You also have this thing called extended background color mode. Now I don't know if this has ever been used very much, it's sort of weird. Um, you have, each cell can really have two possible colors. One of them again is your foreground color, just like in the other modes and that can change from cell to cell. But the other one, the background, can actually be a choice of four different background colors. 
And the way you get that choice is in, instead of giving up a pixel, you give up two you give up two bits of your character number. So instead of having 256 characters, you can only have 64 characters. The other two bits, the top the top two bits are used to determine which of the background colors is used in that cell. So this is this is kind of an, inter an interesting one because it means you can really have five colors and well four of the colors have to be consistent throughout the screen and then one color can keep changing from cell to cell. The interesting thing is then you still have your 320 by 200 resolution. You're not you're not having to squeeze you're not squeezing the screen down to 160 by 200. The bad thing is the 64 characters. You only have 64 characters to choose from then, and I just don't think that would work for our game. I think we're going to need more than 64. By the time you start thinking about all the things, all the different things that need to be on the screen at times, and the fact that some of them, I'm, I'm thinking at least, like people, are probably going to take up at least four. They're probably going to be at least a two by two cell of characters, maybe three by three. I don't know. We'll we'll see as we go with that. But um, and just other other things that will need to be on the screen. I just don't think sixty four is going to cut it. I, that's an interesting mode. I think you know it, it might be useful for some things where you're like, okay, I want to get more color. I don't need to print a lot of different things on the screen, and so I can give up you know, three-fourths of my possible characters get down to just 64. And that's another thing. We're going to need to sometimes print text on the screen for dialogue. So right there you've got your your either 26, if, if you just use capital letters, you've got 26. If you use small letters and capitals, right away you're up to 52. So you've almost used your 64 up just in the texture I need to print on the screen sometimes. So... So that's not going to work for our game, but it is an interesting mode that I'd like to come back to sometime and find some some use for it. I'm, it's probably used in demos, um, but uh, but I don't know if it's ever been used much in games. It's interesting though, as a as a compromise kind of between standard text mode and multicolor text mode, where you get more colors but you have to give up characters. So looking at these three. I was trying to decide, okay, basically I'm trying to decide between the first two, standard mode and multicolor mode. And so I wanted to look at some games. And so I've got Ultima 5 up here running um, up here in the corner. Let me expand that, and hopefully I'll remember to shrink it back up before it gets in the way of anything. Okay, this, this is Ultima 5. I picked it um, because... It runs on the Commodore 128, and so that way I knew I'd be able to go into the monitor and look at, look at where things are located. Um, although the, the Vice 64 uh, emulator has a monitor too, which works just the same, so you, you can do it with either one. But um, I just knew this was one game that I knew had you know graphics that I liked, and I assumed that this is character graphics. Just looking at it, it just looks like it would be. Um, if you look at if you start looking at the screen everything on the screen like a mountain square or a tree square or a water square or whatever everything is two is a two by two character it is two character cells by two character cells or 16 bits by 16 bits you know 16 by 16 pixels whatever however you want to put it and so just looking at this I assumed that that's what it was I assumed it was all character graphics um, and the interesting thing about it is it's not multicolor if you look if you start looking at this, like if you look at my guy here in the center, in the center of the map, he's white on black. There's only two colors in his, if you draw a square around him, there's only two colors in that square. If you go one step up from him, there's only green and black. If you go, let's say, a step down from him, there's gray, black, and green, but on the left, if you remember He's, he's taking up four character cells. So each cell can have its own, its own foreground color. And so the directly down from him, there's two cells of green on black on the left and two cells of gray on black on the right. I don't know how easy the, it'll be to see that, but basically what I'm getting at is there's only two colors in each cell here. And so that's why it's a, it's a pretty sharp 
picture for you know for on Commodore standards um, because it's not doing the multicolor thing where you have to give up where you have to go two two byte sorry two bits for each pixel. So I was looking at that and thinking yeah, that that actually looks pretty good. Um, if you compare that to let's see. Well, let's take a look. Here's an, here's another Ultima Five picture that's pretty sharp, and I think maybe shows it off. Maybe shows this off a little better. Let me switch these here. Okay, um, zoom in a little. If you look at this person here, if you look at this this person, that body is made up. That body takes up four, you know, sixteen by sixteen or four character cells, two by two the top half of the body is purple on black, the bottom half is gray on black. And that's the way these people that's the way this person is too. It's orange orange top, green green bottom. If you and if you look around here if you look around the screen, every section, you know, every if you divided this up, if you drew lines and cut this up into a grid, every section in the grid is two colors. So I thought, okay, that, that looks pretty good. Um, now, here's Legacy of the Ancients. Now this is very clearly um, multicolor mode. Um, at least I'm pretty sure it is. Um, just from the looks of it, you look like in this bush right here, there's um, just, there, there's there's multiple colors, you know, there's more than two colors within an 8 by 8 area, and they're all, every dot is two dots wide. You, you kind of get used to that after a while, where you can tell every dot is twice as wide as a, as a single screen pixel. And um, same way with this little, this little dot within a circle thing here. Um, it's just this is multicolor mode, and so you get a lot more. Your, your picture gets a lot fuzzier because now you've only got 160 pixels across the screen. All your dots are twice as wide. Um, this maybe looks more colorful than the Ultima example, but it's not nearly as sharp. So, you know, it's it's a trade-off. You're trading off resolution for colors. Um, now, another example would be. Now this is, I don't think this is from a Commodore. This is a screenshot I found somewhere one day. And um, Let's see, let me just close that. Okay, here's, here's Pool of Radiance on the Commodore 64 that I've got running on in another emulator. Um, hopefully it's big enough to see what's going on. This person right here in the box is a three is three characters by three characters three three uh, three char three by three space you know three um, cells I guess is the word I should be using three cells and so you look at this you look at this person and I don't know how well you can see it in the video but his hat is yellow his sword is like light green or something his shield is white his torso is red or brown his legs are like light blue his face is kind of a beige color um, you've got all the you know, he's got a purple arm you've got all those colors in there but if you drew a grid over him and divided him three by three there would only be four colors in each there would be a maximum of four colors in each part of that grid because this is multicolor mode um, it looks, you know, so basically they have to be, you know, somebody had to be pretty ingenious about, okay, how do we put these people together so that we can give them different colors, but, you know, divide things up in a grid so that the colors don't interfere with each other. Um, so that's what you can do with multicolor mode. All right. So, so I was looking at these, and I was looking at the Ultima 5 example first, and I just, like I said, I just assumed this was character mode. So, so I come into it and I look where the where the text screen would be at 400, and it's not making sense to me because, well, first of all, the 
what you see on the screen in the Ultima 5 example, let me maybe blow it up just a bit without interfering with the monitor. What you see is, uh, you know, what you can see on the screen is actually 40 columns wide and only 24 tall. If you count them, if you count the lines, you're on, there's only 24 there. And you say, okay, there's a missing line. It's either at the top or at the bottom. I don't know which it is. Um, and it's at the top is where it, it turns out it is. And you can tell that by saying, okay, let's, let's just put something. Let's just put a value up here. Um, A8. Let's just put a value in that first cell and you can see up in that very first cell something happened or the colors changed there. Okay. So, so I'm looking at this and thinking okay if this is text the first 40 bytes starting at 400 should be the 40 characters in that top line and I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the memory here and I'm thinking okay well that makes sense the first 40 are right there and they're all zeros so that makes sense and then I look at the next line it starts with a 60 and then four 61s and I can okay that that makes sense we've got you start with this curved start with this curved corner piece and then you have four pieces for these purple pieces but then it's got a 60 again well 60 I'm thinking 60 would be the same as the corner piece that doesn't make sense and then there's two tens but then there's not an, there's not something there's another ten there's not something different for this moon right here, and if you keep coming across you never see the word select you never see, or or even six different well, five because of the two e's but you know, you should see different values there for that word select so I'm scratching my head thinking okay what what the heck's going on here, so after tinkering around a little bit, I I look at the Vic registers to see what's going on and I see that in this register at D D1011 I guess is what we can call it D011 this is the value 3B well bit 5 which is this bit right here determines bitmap mode so that means bitmap mode is on this one isn't in character mode even though I did I just assumed it had to be because it just it looks like it but the thing is because of the way because of the way the VIC does everything in 8 by or does colors in 8 by 8 cells, whether it's text or graphics, you everything kind of ends up being designed around that 8 by 8 cell layout. And so something that's in bitmap mode can look like character mode, I guess, you know, just because of that's the way things get laid out. So this is not actually drawing characters, it's actually drawing graphics on the screen. Um, so bit 5 there means it's bitmap mode. And then in D, D016, bit 4 determines multicolor, and that's off, which is what, which is correct. This is not multicolor mode. This is, sing, this is you know, two color, you could call it. But the, for, the foreground color, in, well, in fact, and that's, that's the other thing. I was looking at this. I guess I should back up a step. I was looking at this assuming it's in text mode, but there was something strange. And that was, let me blow this up again. The strange thing was these purple bars. I'm looking at these purple bars around around the windows, and there's a there's a white edge on the purple bars. Now, that shouldn't be possible in standard text mode because the background color is the same across the whole screen in standard text mode. So I'm looking at this thing. Okay, where's that white line coming from? That shouldn't be that shouldn't be possible because within an eight by eight cell there should only be the foreground color which is set per cell and then the background color which is set for the whole screen there can't be if the background color is black which it clearly is here because of all the other you know obviously lots of the lots of the screen has background to black then you can't have purple and white in the same cell in standard text mode so that puzzled me and I was trying to figure out how how are they getting that? And then that's what led me to look at this and figure out, oh, it's not text mode, it's bitmap mode. So in bitmap mode, you're still dealing with 8 by 8 cells, but the on bits in the 8 by 8 cell get one color, and the background, or the off bits get the other color, and you can set both colors for each 8 by 8 cell. You're not limited to one background color for the whole screen. 
So they're doing they're so Ultima Five is actually doing bitmap mode, but not multicolor. Now that does give them a little more flexibility in color wise over standard text mode because of the fact, like I say, you can vary both of the colors within an 8x8 cell and not just one of them. Um, but you have to, it, this is having to actually draw everything bit by bit rather than just printing characters. So when it prints, when it moves this, or you know, prints this town on the screen, it's got to print, let's see, that's going to be 8 by 4 bytes, it's going to be 32 bytes, it's got to print 32 bytes to the screen right there rather than printing four characters. Basically it's got to, every time it moves moves the map or prints the map, it's got to do 30, or it's got to do eight times as much work as if it were just working with characters. Now I'm not saying they were wrong to do it that way, it's just the way they did it. Um, like I said, it does give them it does give them that one advantage of being able to use two two colors at a time. Um, now looking at pool of radiance, i pull that back up that, like I said, that is multicolor mode. You can you can tell it's multicolor mode just by the number of colors that are landing, like in like in this little guy's head. You've got yellow, black, and beige. Beige, at least those three. Well, and I guess the gray background too. So you've got four colors within his head, right within his head cell, right there. So it's definitely multicolor mode. So coming back here then, or so for Pool of Radiance in the Commodore 64 emulator, I looked at those same VIC registers, and there bit 5 is set for bitmap mode. Or no, sorry, that's not bit 5. There's bit 5. Bit 5 is clear, and so that means it's not bitmap mode. And bit 4 in D016 is set, which means it's multicolor. So Pool of Radiance is multicolor text mode. So what you're seeing in Pool of Radiance here then is actually all character graphics. Like I thought, I, I, I assumed it was the other way around. I assumed Ultima 5 was text graphics, you know, character graphics, and Pool of Radiance might be um, bitmap, but it's actually the other way around. So each one of these people in Pool of Radiance is actually nine characters, and they've just redefined all the, well, not all the characters, but yeah, the, well, they've redefined all the characters in the character ROM copied them into RAM, redefined them, and so even the text, you know, the text move, view, aim, and all that stuff, you know, they've defined their own characters. They're not just using the standard Commodore ones, but all these people graphics are characters, too, and the walls and everything else, it's all characters. So that kind of shows, you know, what you can do. You know, both games run fine. I wouldn't say one is necessarily faster than the other one. Um, so it's just, I think it's just kind of a kind of a question of how you want to do it. So, so I was looking at these things and looking at the Ultima 5 one especially because I I think you know if I could make it look at least that good <laughs> you know I'd be pretty happy with it. Um, and so then that brought me back to the 80 column screen again. I'm thinking okay what if on the 80 column screen Again, you just have one background color. That's the big. That's the big drawback. And you can have one foreground color in each cell. So it's basically like standard text mode in the VIC, which is basically what Ultima 5 here looks like. Even though it's in bitmap mode, it looks like you know standard text mode, and that you've only have you have a background color, which is black basically everywhere except those purple bars. And then you have one foreground color in each 8x8 cell. So we can do that on the 80 column screen. We'll just be limited to one background color, which for our game, maybe we'll make that gray or something, something a little less stark. I don't know. But we can do that. And we actually gain because on the 80 column screen, we have 640 wide resolution, where on here, there's an 8x8 cell. Or like the little guy is four eight by eight cells, two by two of them. On the eighty column screen, that'd be that'd be eight of them. That same space could be eight cells wide. 
And so even though each one of those cells can only have, you know, one foreground color, we can actually get more colors into that same space than in the standard text mode on the VIC. Now, still going to have to use some ingenuity to say, okay, you know, they, they, can't, they can't mix and, and mingle. But just like with these guys here, if you use some ingenuity and say, okay, his sword can be a different color from his shield, can be a different color from his legs, can be a different color from his hat, because we made sure that, that those things fell in, their, fell in their own cells. So if we do that, we can, uh, we can take advantage of that. And the other nice thing is on the 80 column mode, we have 512 characters. Um, we can use all, we, we don't, we're not limited to 256 like in the VIC. We can use 512 with the attribute bit that turns on the second set. We can use both sets at the same time. And that's going to give us a lot more characters to be able to put stuff on the screen to where, you know, I was thinking, like, say, say for all our crops, you know, you, and I don't even know yet, like, is a radish going to be one character or is it going to be two by two characters? I, I don't have any idea yet. Um, but it just gives us a lot more characters to work with or if we want to say, okay, each crop can have four characters and then maybe it has four character you know maybe maybe it looks like one thing if, if you think of how things look in Stardew Valley if you've played that you know something that takes say five days to grow looks a little different each day now we probably won't be able to go to that kind of extreme but you know you could have something say okay for the first third of the time that it's growing there's a small version of it, and then there's a you know a medium version of it, and then there's a large version of it. And so, if you say okay, the radish takes up four cells, two a two by two thing, that's four characters. You've got to have four for the small version, four for the lar medium version, and four for the large version. And those all have to be available in so that's twelve, and those all have to be available in your character um, set. At the same time, because you might plant one radish one day and another radish the next day, and then you know they're not necessarily going to be at the same time, and so those are all going to have to be available. And you say, okay, you know, say just just using that as an example, say you need 12 bytes to define each crop, and say you have 50 different things you can grow. Well, right away you're up to 600 bytes. Um, that's too many. <laughs> so. <laughs> So even 512 is a limit that we're going to have to deal with. Um, but it's definitely a better limit than 256, and like I said, 64 is just an impossible limit. So all this basically is to explain that I came back around after a couple weeks of, of convincing myself 80 column mode wasn't going to work. I came back around to 80 column mode will work, and that's what we're going to use. Um, the worst that can happen is it's a it's a huge failure, um, but that's the way I'm going to go with it. We're gonna we're gonna give that a shot. Um, so that means um, that means the the screen now like like these games like Ultima Five, you know it has this it has this little map. It's not the whole screen. Um, I plan on using the whole screen or close to it. Maybe there will be a, an inventory section in the corner or something like that, um, or in, you know, an information panel in the corner or something like that. I'd like to use more of the screen than this. Um, one thing in the 80 column mode, when it comes to moving the screen, we do have some advantages there in that the 80 column chip can, can move or you know, can copy blocks of memory by just being told copy this block from here to there. We did that before in one of the one of the videos. Um, and so copying, you know, say say moving our map, scrolling our map should be faster there than it would have been um, on the 40 column in the in the bitmap. Um, so I don't know what else there is to say about that. That's, that was a lot of talk. That was a half hour of talking basically just to explain why I'm back to the 80 column screen. Um, I wanted to use it because it is a one, it is a Commodore 128 thing, um, you know, that's, that's unique to that. So I wanted to use it and then 
I was afraid it just wouldn't work for this, and now I'm convinced that it, it can work. Um, I think color, I think color-wise, it won't be it won't be as warm as these colors. These are, I think, the 40 column screen colors to me are are warmer. That may just be because the pixels are bigger, they're fuzzier around the edges. Um, I don't know if that's the reason or if it's just the the colors they picked. But I just it seems to me like like um, Commodore 64 games just tend to have kind of a warmer, softer color palette to them. Um, but that might just be what people chose. So looking at you know looking at Ultima 5 here, that's also running on the Vic. That's not an 80 you know it's not an 80 column game, but I think you could take that look and you know put it on the 80 column screen and it would look just fine except that all the characters and everything would be sharper because you're dealing with pixels that are half the size horizontally. Um, all right, so that's the plan. Um, I don't really have any coding to do today to go with that. I guess what we'll need to do is... I'm not really... That's the, that's the other thing. I've been just kind of mentally stuck on, okay, what do you do first? Where do you start? Um, a lot of times with a program, just in general, when you're when you're designing a program, a lot of times you start with the data because a program is basically data and functions, data and functionality. You have data, which you know, if in a game like this, your data is going to be your your character information, the information about the villagers, your information about your farm, what's going on in different places, all that kind of stuff. That's your data. And then you have your functions that act on the data. You know, if you if you take something simpler like a like a tic tac toe game, your data is the board. What's the condition of the board? Whose move is it? That you know, that's your data. And then your functionality is how does a move work? How do you tell when the game is over? Things like that. So you always have those two things to look at. Sometimes, some people say data design. Data-driven design is, is they'll preach data-driven design, meaning you always just think about your data and, you know, everything comes from that. And that's not necessarily a bad way to look at it, but it just depends on your program, what you're doing. I think in this case, we probably do need to start with the data and think about, okay, what, you know, what does the game need? Um, like I say, player information, it's just going to take some time to lay all that kind of stuff out. Um, you know, what attributes does the player have? We're, we're going to have leveling up. There's just going to be a lot of things that have to be decided as far as numbers. And and then, like I said, we've got to decide, like this little guy in Ultima 5, he's two cells by two cells, you know, tall and wide. You look at these people in, in uh, Pool of Radiance, they're three by three. You know, I don't know... If I'm, you know, we might go two wide and three tall, or I, I don't know. And on the 80 column screen, three by three becomes six by three, so you have a little more leeway there. You could go five by three. You could go slightly narrower. Um, so we'll just have to see. Um, it's, there's going to be some time spent just planning this, um, just figuring out, okay, like what crops can you, what crops can you plant? How much is each one going to cost? How much do you get for it when you sell it? All, all that kind of stuff. And I don't necessarily think you should have to sit and watch me do all that, but I'm going to at least go through some of each bit of it um, as we go along. Because all that has to be laid out in, in memory, and we have to make sure there's room for it all. Just like with, with dialogue, if there's, let's say there's 30 people in the game that you can talk to, and let's say each one has 30 things they can say. That's 900 different things that a person might say. And let's say each thing averages 30 characters. Each thing they might say averages 30 characters. Now you're up to 27,000 um, bytes to hold all the possible dialogue that could happen. So you know, you're up to eating 27k for that, which isn't necessarily a problem. But everything's going to use some memory. You've got to make sure it can all fit. Um, so, 
I guess that's what we'll be doing next time. I'm going to try to think of some something to get started on coding-wise, so the next video isn't just planning. But um, but there is going to be a fair amount of planning to do. So I, I will show at least at least part of each step of the planning, just so you can see where things are coming from when we get into the coding part. Um, especially in terms of laying it out in memory. I've already had one request to do kind of a, a tutorial on structures, like, like data structures, and how to access them, how to create them, and that kind of thing. So that's definitely kind of come into it, because things like dialog trees, um, you know, tables for the crops, tables for, for other things, um, those, will all, those will all be structures in memory that will have to be accessible. So we'll be coming back to that. Um, well, I think rather than ramble anymore, I'm just going to cut this off there. Um, we've settled we've settled the graphics question. And now we can, hopefully with that out of my head, um, I won't be stuck anymore. We can get moved on and uh, get started actually putting some, putting some things together and then getting some code to do them. So that's it for this time, and thank you for watching.